a series of videos on the fundamentals of pharmacokinetics. You will find these videos useful by themselves, but they are nevertheless best viewed alongside a textbook, Clinical Pharmacokinetics from the Beginning. It's available on Amazon and priced for a student budget. The textbook and these videos are themed around an imaginary drug called Pretendolone. Drug concentration time data are used to build a pharmacokinetic profile. If you want more information on how this works, see video one and introduction. Video five, absolute oral bioavailability. And in the tradition of these videos, we start with a model. If you take a drug orally, it will go into your gastrointestinal tract. It might pass all the way through your GI tract as unabsorbed drug and be excreted in feces, in which case it'll probably just be flushed away. Perhaps more likely is that at least some portion of that drug will be absorbed through the GI tract. Human physiology dictates that anything absorbed from the GI tract goes into the hepatic portal vein and then into the liver. In our simplified model, the drug has two routes out of the liver, either as unchanged parent drug entering plasma where it will circulate around the body, or the liver will metabolize the drug and the drug is then extracted from circulation by metabolism. And so there are two processes which can limit the amount of the orally administered drug that ends up in plasma. And so consequently, only some fraction of the unchanged parent drug that was given orally actually reaches the plasma. The fraction of the oral dose that reaches the plasma as unchanged parent drug is known as the absolute oral bioavailability or F. As I've just said, the fraction of the unchanged parent drug that reaches plasma is known as F, or sometimes F abs for absolute. It ranges from one, where all the drug reaches systemic circulation, to zero, where none of the drug reaches systemic circulation. F is a fraction, and so it has no units, although you may see it expressed as a percentage. Let's look at three drugs as examples. Paracetamol, or acetaminophen, depending on where you live in the world, has an F close to 1, which means that a, close to 100% of the drug reaches the plasma. Sumatriptan has an F around 0.15, meaning that only around 15% of the drug reaches plasma. A cyclovir has an F around 0.2, meaning that about 20% of the drug reaches plasma. The reason why sumatriptan and acyclovir have low bioavailability, we'll come back to that in just a moment. We'll return to our model and just keep in mind that this model has been simplified. The liver is not the only organ that can metabolize a drug. And there is actually another route out of the liver through biliary excretion. But we're not going to worry about those in our simplified model. You will meet this model again in video 7a when we encounter clearance. So how is absolute oral bioavailability calculated? We start by giving an oral dose to some individual. We know the dose because it is the mass of drug in the capsule or the 
tablet or however we've administered it. It's the mass of drug. That mass of drug will result in some given area under the drug concentration time curve or AUC. If you're not familiar with AUC, it was covered in the previous video, video four. And so I suggest you go back to video four and just refresh your memory. So we have some given mass of drug resulting in a given AUC. But how do we relate the AUC to the fraction of that drug that reaches plasma? What we need is a reference point where we know F equals 1. That is 100% of the drug reaches the plasma. How do we do that? Well, we don't do it through an oral dose. We do it by intravenous injection. If we inject the drug, it will go directly into the plasma. So we know that 100% of the drug reaches plasma and therefore F is equivalent to 1. That intravenous injection will result in some AUC. And in this case, the AUC for the intravenous dose represents the exposure of the administered drug when F equals 1. So we can say the AUC for the intravenous dose is equivalent to an F of 1. And for the oral dose, we can calculate its absolute oral bioavailability F by proportion of the oral AUC divided by the intravenous AUC. It's that simple. But there is a little wrinkle. The oral dose was 50 milligrams and the intravenous dose was 2 milligrams. So we do have to normalise this for doses. That's very straightforward. We simply divide the oral AUC by the oral dose and the intravenous AUC by the intravenous dose. That will give us F, the absolute oral bioavailability. But it is not the usual equation that you will see. The usual equation is rearranged from this, like this. And that there is the standard equation for calculating the absolute oral bioavailability F. Let's calculate it for pretend alone. We know from video four, the AUC for a 50 milligram oral dose was 800 nanograms per mil times hours. And the AUC for a two milligram intravenous dose was 91 nanograms per mil times hours. We can just pop those into the equation and we end up with an F of 0 0.35. So the absolute oral bioavailability of pretendolone is 0 0.35 or 35%. The value of F doesn't tell us anything about why the absolute oral bioavailability is relatively low. It just tells us that it is. Let's return to our example drugs that we introduced earlier and focus on sumatriptan and acyclovir because they have limited oral absolute bioavailability. Let's look at those drugs in the context of our model. Sumatriptan is very well absorbed from the GI tract but it is heavily metabolized in the liver. So the oral absolute bioavailability of sumatriptan is limited by its metabolism. On the other hand, a cyclovir is very poorly metabolized in the liver, but it is also poorly absorbed. So it is absorption in this case that limits its absolute oral bioavailability. For pretend alone, of course, we don't know if it's absorption or metabolism that limits its absolute oral bioavailability. When we get to video 7c, we look at Rowland's equation 
and we may be able to get some insight as to what limits the absolute oral bioavailability of pretendolone from that equation. More on Rowland's equation and other information such as relative oral bioavailability can be found in the textbook if you want more information. In the next video, video six, we are going to look at the volume of distribution. See you there.